Let's get some further reaction and analysis on the emergence of Kamala Harris as now the Democratic nominee or the presumptive nominee. Joining me is the former chair of the Strategic Policy Institute, Stephen Loosley, also a, a former senator. Stephen, tell me, who do you think are the favourites now to be the running mate for Kamala Harris? Obviously, there's a geographic equation, among other considerations, that need to be factored in here. Uh, always, uh, Karen, but particularly important uh, this time, uh, which is why Vice President Harris has asked former Attorney General Eric Holder to preside over the selection. Uh, and you're right, there are different governors who uh, who, who come into play, uh, from Josh Shapiro in, uh, in Pennsylvania, Roy Cooper in North Carolina, my own favourite, Andy Bashir in uh, Kentucky, people in the Congress, uh, such as uh, Senator Mark Kelly from Arizona. It's a, it's a balance of geography. It's a balance of uh, philosophy. And uh, given the selection of uh, uh, J.D. Vance, a senator from Ohio, who is uh, something of a firebrand in the, uh, in the Trump camp, the contrast is going to be important between the two vice presidential candidates uh, in support of... Uh, former President Trump on the one hand and Vice President Harris on the other. And one of the things as well that was put to me by an analyst in recent days is that if you say, look at Mark Kelly, former fighter pilot, astronaut, he gives the national security message and can help bolster Harris on an area of weakness, that being the borders. Yes, and uh, Senator Kelly has... Uh, not been hesitant to break with the Biden administration over handling or mishandling of the uh, of the border policies. So he does bring that extra element uh, to the ticket, and he does have a stellar uh, background uh, professionally in the Air Force and in, in space. Uh, he's also uh, married to uh, former Congresswoman uh, Gabby Giffords, who's survived a shocking assault in Tucson years ago, which uh, really brought into play, again, the uh, the presence of guns in the hands of uh, people who are clearly deranged and go after American public figures, as we saw just recently with the attempt on Donald Trump's life. So Senator Kelly brings a lot to the ticket, no uh, question about that. And he would be one of those uppermost in the vice president's mind. The reset happens for both sides, though, doesn't it? Because Donald Trump has to reset his strategy, given how effective they were in, in basically... I think Joe Biden did a bit himself in terms of his lack of uh, cohesion and, uh, and certainly the poor performance in that first debate was the, the, the killer in that. But Donald Trump had that laser focus on the age, incompetence, lack of acuity. Now they've got to change. Very much so. Uh, the Trump campaign was focused almost exclusively on the frailty of President Biden. And if you look at the statement that Donald Trump issued after Joe Biden announced his withdrawal from the race, it was so lacking in grace, you'd have to assume that there was a lot of personal venom there in the, in the Trump approach. Now, it's true Joe Biden will remain in the White House as incumbent president. But the focus is, is now on the vice president as a presumptive Democratic nominee. So the, the Trump campaign really has to recalibrate uh, its approach. Now, in the Atlantic, just in the, the last few days, I noted that some of the senior Republican campaigners had told the magazine that their worst fear for a campaign was the institutional Democratic framework that opposes them. Uh, that is not only the administration and the Congress, but people uh, on the ground. Now, you've seen the institutional democratic framework uh, come into play over the last couple of days, rallying behind Kamala Harris and doing it very effectively and very quickly, so that uh, in, in all probability by the first week of August, the candidacy for the presidency will be confirmed and the uh, convention yeah. in Chicago a couple of weeks later will be something of, of, of a massive endorsement in primetime TV. So the Democrats have responded mm -hmm. effectively. It's now up to the Republicans 
to match that. Given them uh, some sense of hope, can they sustain the enthusiasm to get people out? That remains the question. Stephen Loosely, thank you as always.